Okay. Okay. So, hi, I'm Alejandro. Um, this is my teaching the doc on measurements. Um, I actually went ahead and just wrote everything down on this whiteboard that I have. It's like I have everything already from scientific notation to sig figs and the density, just so like it can go smoother and like more, go more quicker, I guess you could say. But I'm go ahead and start off with scientific notation and how to change the number from standard form to um, scientific notation. Okay, so starting off with our scientific notation. So basically, this is this would be right here. I guess you would say it's like the equation of scientific notation or like the setup, something like that. So like it goes a number times 10 to a power. So for example, on Right here on number one, I have 238,000. So for that, your number would be any number between one to 10. So you would find where to put a decimal to make it, to make a number from one to 10. So in this case, it would be 2.38. So that would be a number from one to 10. And on that, you would start with your decimal at the very end right here, and then you would just move spaces to the left so you would go one two three five and you would put your decimal so it would make it 2.38 so the answer is 2.38 times 10 to the fifth so that's how you get your your power so how many spaces you move to get to that decimal that's your power so you get five okay so on this next one it's basically the same thing so 876,500 so your answer to that would be 8.765 times 10 to the fifth power. And basically you start at the very end and then you move your spaces. All the, you move your spaces, your five spaces, one, two, three, four, five, to get 8.76, 8.765. So that's, that's a number between one and 10. So that's, so that would be your answer, 8.765 times 10 to the fifth power. Okay, and so in some cases, um, you're going to have to move to the right instead of the left. So you're going to end up with a, a, a negative power, a negative exponent. So, so for example, you have here on number three, you have 0 0.000543. So there we would have to move from this decimal. One, two, three, four. You're going to have to move four spaces to get 5.43 and then since you move four places to the right you would have um 5 5.43 times 10 to the negative fourth power so anytime you move to the right instead of the left it's going to be negative so moving to the left is positive moving to the right is negative so example number four you would have 0 0.089 so the answer to that, you would move this decimal place one, two, right there. So you get 8.9. So your answer would be 8.9 times 10 to the negative two power because you only move two places to the right. So another example would be, okay, so it would be 7,600,000. So on this one, you're moving to the left. So you would move one, two, three. Four, five, six, six spots. So you to get seven point six. So your answer would be seven point six times ten to the sixth power. It's pretty simple and not not too complicated, but yeah. So just a key thing to remember is whenever you're moving, whenever you're moving to the left, your your exponent is going to be positive. Whenever you move to the right, it's going to be a negative. Okay. So moving on from scientific notation we go to sig figs now sig figs i kind of like honestly i i find them pretty easy and not not the hardest thing in the world but and i i just remember doing them in high school too it's pretty fun but okay so it's with sig figs how did how to determine the number of sig figs so mm, okay so here on your first example you have 0 0.0025 so okay so anytime you have um, zeros before, okay, so 
on on this one is only gonna be two sig figs. You only have two sig figs, and why? It's because all these zeros right here to the left of two and five, they're called um they're called leading zeros. And leading zeros, anytime anytime you have those, they don't count as sig figs. So the only the only two that would count would be two and five that would count as sig figs. So your answer would be two sig figs. Now on next on this one on, on number two you have one point zero zero eight. And on this one you have captive zeros involved. And captive zeros are like anytime you have zeros in between sig figs. So these two are actually in between the one and the eight, so they would count as sig figs. So so your answer for that one would be four sig figs. Okay, and then on number three you have a hundred you just have a hundred and then you have a decimal. So on there it would be three sig figs. But let's say that decimal was to be erased, it wasn't there, then you would only have one sig fig instead of three. Because um these are gonna be your Okay, so these are your leading, these are your captive, and these are going to be your trailing zeros. And trailing zeros is just like any zeros that that whenever you don't have a decimal, and then any zeros after your sig fig. So those don't count. But in this case, you have that decimal, so that's why it's three sig figs instead of just one. Okay, so in addition, okay, now like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and Dividing sig figs, a lot. Some people think it's pretty complicated, but uh, I don't really think so. Okay, it's just it's just like rounding and stuff like that. It's pretty simple. But for example, right here on addition, you have twelve point eleven plus eighteen point zero plus one point zero one three. Okay, so whenever you're adding, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and and division, basically, um, you have you have one of these sets of, sets a limit to your answer, so and limit I mean like sig figs. So okay, so twelve point eleven has four sig figs. Eighteen point zero has three sig figs. Um, and then and then you have one point zero one three, which is four sig figs. And the one with the least amount of sig figs is going to be your limitation. So in this case, it's going to be eighteen point zero. That only has three sig figs. So in your answer, whenever you add them all up, you're gonna get thirty-one point one two one twenty-three. So you would just um you would just round that down from a thirty-one thirty-one point one two three to a thirty-one point one, and then you would have three sig figs too in the answer. So that's so basically. The basically the one with the least amount of sig figs is gonna be your limitation to your answer. So when we get all that you get thirty one point one and then you get three sig figs. So it's pretty simple. Now with subtracting it's basically the same thing. Um on here you have zero point six eight seven five minus zero point one. So your limitation is gonna be zero point one, which is um Yeah, which is um, which is just two sig figs. So, okay, so you get your once you subtract them, you get zero point five eight seven five, and then you just round that. You round that zero point five eight seven five to a zero point six, which gives you two sig figs. Okay, so and then you have another one down here. This is one thousand eighty one minus seven point twenty five. And on this one, you have a limitation of three sig figs. So on your answer, you want three sig figs. So whenever you subtract those, you get 1,074. Or actually, never mind. Cross that out. On this one, this one's different though, because 1,081 doesn't have a decimal place. So this one, you're going to go with, you can go with four sig figs instead of three, just because it doesn't have a decimal. So on your answer you want four sig figs instead of three. This is just like one of those like um what would you how would you say it? you would um 
this is this is one of those instances where you would just um you would just allow it I guess you could say because it's just one of those like rules of chemistry. But yeah. So instead of instead of the limitation of three sig figs, you're gonna go with four because one thousand eighty one doesn't have a decimal. So in your answer you have one thousand seventy four which equals four sig figs. Okay, so now moving on to multiplication. Um, multiplication, it's it's kind of the same thing. It's just like the limitation and stuff. So you have 4.56 times 1.4. So in your answer, when you do that, you get 6.3, 6.384. And then you round that off, and you just want your two sig figs. Because 1.4 hell, that's your limitation. Only has two sig figs. So when you round off your answer of 6.384, 6 you get 6.4. Okay, 6.4, which equals 2 sig figs. So another example would be 2.3 times 3.14. And then on here, your limitation would be 2 sig figs, because 2.3 is only 2 sig figs. So on your answer, you would get, you would get 7.2, which is 2 sig figs. So it's a pretty simple process, not too hard. And division is kind of kind of the same way. So you just do your eight point eight point three hundred and fifteen divided by two hundred and ninety-eight. And on here you're gonna want three sig figs because going back to um subtraction where we had one thousand seventy seventy-four at four sig figs just because of the one thousand eighty-one didn't have a decimal. And over here, um, it's the same thing. You have 8, 8.315 divided by 298, and 298 doesn't have a decimal, so we're going to go with three sig figs instead of the limitation. So on your answer, whenever you divide those two numbers, you get 0 0.027927. And then whenever you, whenever you round that, that answer you would get 2.79, which gives you three sig figs. Going back to your 298, which only has three sig figs. So that's pretty simple. And then you just have it set up differently right here, which you just have 6.543 divided by divided by 3.2, which equals 2.04. And then on here, it's just one of those special circumstances because this is just like a captive zero so you really only wanted two sig figs but since you can't do nothing about the zero because it's just like it's like in the middle of the two and four and so you would that would just be your answer 2.04 okay and like the rules like you see me rounding and stuff whenever i was doing these um problems so the rules of rounding is like when okay for example right here you have 1.33 so you would always go with the number that's after the first number on to the right of the decimal. So you have 1.33. So your answer would just be 1.3. If it would, if this three was a five or a six, it would be 1.4 instead of 1.3. So anything, anytime a number is five or higher, you would round that number to the left of it. Okay, so another example is right here you have 1.36, and since since that 6 is um, more than a 5, then you would round that 3 to a 1.4, and that would be your answer. So, and then another example is 1.56. Um, a lot of people kind of mess up sometimes because they would, instead of rounding it to 1.6, like how they're supposed to, they'd round it to, a, to just a 2, like a whole number, just 2. They would round this this one to a two instead of just rounding the five instead. So that would be an instance where you would be wrong. But yeah, so the answer to one point five six would just be one point six, not two. Okay, so right here it says round to three sig figs. I just made this problem by myself. So you have two point four five six seven, and then you want to round that to a three sig figs. So 2.4567 rounded to 3 sig figs would be 2.46 cuz you have these first you have these first 3 right here 2.5 and then notice this 6 right here is greater than a 5 so you would round that 5 right here 
giving you a 2.46. So those are the rules on rounding and stuff. Pretty simple, not too hard. Okay, um, so now we have sig figs and scientific notation out of the way. Pretty simple topics, well, to me at least. Not, not the hardest thing in chemistry. So now we're going to talk about density. Okay, density. Hope you can see that. Okay, density. So density, the formula for density would be, okay, it's what you see right here. It's mass over volume. So, for example, on this, on this, um, on this word problem, you have a student finds that a 23.50 milliliter of a certain liquid weighs 35.062 grams. What is the density? So you would set up your you would set up your formula or your equation to mass over volume. So your mass would be your mass would be 35.062, and then your volume would be 23.50. So you just set that up 35.062 over 20 23.50 milliliters, and then you get hope you can see that. And then you would get 1.492 grams or milliliters. That would be your density. It's pretty simple and not too hard. It's just a simple equation. So yeah. So we went over density, sig figs, um, and scientific notation and the rules of rounding. Um, I hope I hope you could see this. I hope I was pretty clear on on my explanations of how you do things, but yeah. Thank you.